morning. I've just woken up from an average night's sleep, but what a way to wake up. Absolutely beautiful scenes here. A uh, bit bleary eyed, but feeling good. I'm gonna get the camera set up pretty quickly to capture some landscape photography in this truly, truly stunning landscape. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, and I would love it if you came along with me this morning to capture the sunrise. Let's go. Wow, I mean, what a morning. I'm set up for my first shot of the day. It's brutally windy, but the sun is just starting to come up, as you can hopefully see on the screen now. That's pretty much the composition I'm going for, for the first shot. Just that line of mountains, capturing the mist, capturing the sun as it's coming up above the horizon. And it's just looking incredible. It's just gonna add to the story of what I've done here, of wild camping at 900 meters. Settings wise, I am at F8 because everything I'm shooting is right in the distance. I want to maximize the sharpness of the lens. I'm at ISO. I'm at ISO 1000 and the reason for that is because of this brutal wind because with this 70 to 200 on here in this wind it's blowing about quite a lot so I need to up the shutter speed to 1 200th of a second to freeze that so there's no movement and blur in the image. Let's have a look. Yeah a bit of flare down in the shadow area I think I'm going to go for a square crop anyway so I can remove that flare really rather easily and it'll just be a really simple straight up sunrise shot with the sun in the image as well so I'm happy with that as my first shot of the day. I don't care about the wind it's just look at it it's just absolutely an incredible place to wake up. <laughs> Landscape photography and wild camping it doesn't come much better. They are married. They are married and it just works so, so well. So, second shot. It is pretty amusing waking up and getting battered with this wind first thing in the morning, but it's certainly blowing the cobwebs away. I'm getting a shot that I just couldn't quite figure out last night or last week as when you saw it and that is just shooting straight down the valley past Seathwaite where we parked our car to Derwent Water but I think I've got it now and what I needed to do was very simply make it a vertical shot so I've still got the 70 to 200 lens on there I've gone vertical and the composition I'm getting is basically just the valley sort of forms a bit of an S shape winding its way towards Derwent Water and Keswick in the distance and there's some mist sitting in that valley and it's just looking incredible. It may even get even better as that sun comes up a bit and starts to light the tops of the mountains a little bit more, but it's just a really nice shot. And I just couldn't figure out how to do it last night because there was so much going on. I've woken up fresh this morning, a bit more focused on the photography as well now that the camp's done. It's got that nice green feel that you get in this part of the Lake District. If you go over this way towards Scarfell Pike, it's a lot less green. It's kind of has that orangey tinge to it, but the Borrowdale Valley, which is what that is, is nice and green and beautiful. So the light's changing all the time as the sun rises. So it's really just a case of continuing to capture. Settings wise, quite similar to the last shot. F8 because I don't have anything close in my foreground. It's just the S shape of the valley that's working for me. This time I'm at ISO 1250. I have a shutter speed of 1 80th of a second, and that should be just enough to capture a nice sharp image. I am gonna check that though, and all I'm gonna do is go into play mode and then zoom in and check that it's sharp. And if it isn't, I can do it again. So the sun's up quite nicely now and look at the light on the mountain there. Just, just phenomenal. What I am trying to do now is just capture this whole scene as a panorama. And I think it could end up being one of the best panoramas I have ever captured. So to do that, what I've done is got the tripod leveled off on this particularly rocky ground. You've got to have your tripod level if you're going to do a panorama using the tripod. I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna do one on the tripod and then 
I'm going to do one handheld. I've been talking a bit recently about doing handheld landscape photography and it just works, like I said the other week, really well with panoramas. So I'm going to do two as a bit of a test for me and to show you what the difference is between using a tripod and doing it handheld. So for the tripod shots, I have, the settings are better. I've got ISO 100, I'm at F8 because maximum sharpness as I've been saying, and then I'm at 1 15th of a second. And then it's just a case of unlocking the tripod. So it then spins around on its axis like that. And it's just a case of using the little chart on the tripod. And then it's just a case of going around. So let's do that now. So the second one I'm gonna do handheld. I need to up the shutter speed a bit because I'm hand holding. I've then had to boost the ISO, but not by much, only to 320. So there's still gonna be pretty clean files coming off this handheld shot. With the Canon 5D Mark IV, even when you've got to increase the ISO a little bit, it isn't that detrimental to the overall image. Although this is a panorama that I want to get right because the conditions are just so beautiful. Yeah, right, let's do that now. I'm gonna to have to put the camera down. Okay, let's move the tripod out of, out of the way. And then, as I've done before, you wanna plant your feet up firm in the, probably in the end position, and then just tilt at your hips and twist round and then start shooting. I can see Gary Goff down there who is still with me today and then just let your hips bring you back round to the starting position. My goodness, the light on these mountains now is just, just incredible. What a morning. What a great way to wake up and start your day. Such a strong feeling of well-being. Ah, yes! Ah. Gary didn't bother waiting for me and has cracked on with breakfast, but what have you got, Gary? Beans and sausages, you can't beat it. Not quite as good as your all-day breakfast, I have to admit, but uh, piping hot. that my friends is that so that's not quite it because i think you will find it interesting the outcome of the handheld and the tripod panorama and i wanted to show you that and it's just a case of every time loading the images into lightroom and once they're in lightroom you can organize the images from each different panorama just by using the color marker and that's what i've done here so with the first one we're going to select all the tripod shots and then just right click go down to merge and then select panorama and then we just got to wait for that to create the preview and as you can see from that preview it is a pretty good panorama there's those white boxes around the outside is just where the it, the image is not quite square but we can either auto crop that or use the boundary warp and the boundary warp is a very interesting tool because you just drag that slider and it warps the image to fill that white space and i'm going to do that with this image because it's such a small amount of space you're not going to notice any difference whatsoever we then just create the panorama and wait for that to finish so that's that one done now we go into the second file in the handheld file and merge all those photos in exactly the same way and then we just wait for that preview to open up and as you can see with this one, I haven't been very good with the way I've created this. I'm normally much better than this, but we can still make something from this image and I think you'll be surprised by this. So we can either auto crop and then that just makes it a much thinner, longer image, which is not particularly what I want. Or we can go all the way up on the boundary warp and fill those corners in. Now, this is going to warp it a bit too much in this case, I think. So what I'm going to do is do about 50% boundary warp and then 50% auto crop. And then I'm going to create that panorama and we'll compare the two. So these are now the final edited images. This one is from the tripod and this one is the handheld shot. And I think they are barely any different. There is a slight difference, but if I showed you each one in isolation, I'm not sure you would notice the difference. And the fact that on the handheld one, I've managed to get the exposure just a little bit better and bring those highlights down a bit more, I think that is a better picture. It's composed a little bit better as well. And I, I'm really, overall, just really, really 
happy with that image. The light looks great, the sky looks great with those pastel-y colours, and you can just see comparing the two, you're really not losing that much when you do it handheld, especially if you've got it in good light with relatively low ISO as well. You saw on the video last week, even with high ISO, it works pretty well, but if you want to get it perfect, yes, use the tripod, but I think by doing that, you might not be setting up your tripod as often as you might do by just panning around doing it handheld and you're going to end up taking more images, more good panoramas if you use this handheld method. So I just wanted to show you that, show you the final images because I'm really, really happy with them. Coming up, I've just put up a new series of landscape photography workshops. If you go to firstmanphotography.com slash workshops, check them out and I'd love to have you along. So I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos. They've been great to make. I've had great fun with Gary as well. Check his channel out and please do share the video because that helps me more so than anything else. I will see you again on Wednesday. I'm going to try and put two videos out as much as possible now. I've got one ready for Wednesday, so I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography, tired after an epic journey. <laughs>